As Donna said, I am here today to talk about the Hospital Profit Transparency and Fairness Act. It's an important measure that will require a number of things for hospitals to be transparent about their financial holding, both offshore and domestic, and their other activities, to limit CEO compensation, to limit and claw back excessive profits ensures that, tax payers, that taxpayers' dollars are dedicated exclusively to safe patient care and necessary services for all communities of the Commonwealth. Every patient, every hospital, whether it's nonprofit or for profit, gets an average of 60% of its money from public funding, namely taxpayers via Medicare and Medicaid to provide health care for the residents of the Commonwealth. Yet, there is no way for the public and policymakers to accurately understand how those tax do taxpayer dollars are being allocated. This initiative is needed to ensure that the public and the communities served by these hospitals have a clear picture of the financial health of the hospitals that serve their needs. Furthermore, it will serve to ensure that patients are getting care they need with the resources that are available to these hospital administrators. There's a growing trend of consolidation in service closures as large corporate health care systems are forming. As an organization, MNA and NNU, in concert with numerous consumer and health care advocacy groups, have been involved in a number of campaigns over the year to protect patients, to protect services for local communities that are direct results of this ominous trend. For example, in 2013, Partners Healthcare, which posted profits exceeding $350 million, attempted to close its highly successful and desperately needed medical detox program at Brigham and Women's Faulkner Hospital, even though the DPH determined it was an essential service. They have since embarked on a plan to close the pediatric unit at Cooley Dickinson Hospital in Northampton. In 2013, a coalition of community members from Franklin County have formed to serve as a watchdog group over Bay State health, health Systems, which has systematically siphoned off services from Bay State Franklin Medical Center in Greenfield to its Springfield-based hospital, all the while posting multi-million dollar profits and paying the CEO more than $3 million per year. And right now, the residents of North Adams Regional Hospital are waging war to stop the closure of their pediatric unit, their psychiatric unit, their critical care unit, as the local hospital struggles to survive while serving one of the poorest communities in the Commonwealth. Cambridge Health Alliance and my employer, Boston Medical Center, are two hospitals that serve the disproportionate share of Medicaid patients. We are also struggling to survive under the current reimbursement structure. While rapidly growing networks of hospitals, such as Partner Healthcare and Beth Israel Deaconess, generate significant profits from serving a, largely pop a larger population of privately insured patients. In each of these instances, health care executives cite financial uncertainty surrounding the onset of health care reform as their driving force behind their decisions. At a time when WBUR recently reported that the hospital's profit recently have doubled from 2010 to 2012. The proposed ballot initiative has four key uh, provisions addressing the situation. First, a facility that accepts funds from the Commonwealth and whose patients mix is, the, is less than 60% of government paid and reports an annual operating margin that exceeds 8%, that facility shall be subject to a civil penalty equal to the amount of profit that exceeds 8%. Second, if a hospital that receives taxpayer money to compensate its CEO annually more than 100 times the annual compensation of the lowest full-time employer employee of that hospital, the hospital will pay a fine equal to the amount over the cap and those funds will be deposited into a special fund which I will describe shortly. Third, every hospital that receives taxpayer money will be required to disclose all financial assets, including assets held in offshore accounts. This will allow policymakers and the public to better understand the true financial picture of the state's health care providers and what they are doing with those resources. Lastly, the initiative creates a new fund on the Commonwealth books called the Medicare 
Reimbursement Enhancement Fund, which will be funded by the penalties of excessive CEO compensations and profits as described above. Money in this fund is intended to be used to improve Medicaid reimbursement to eligible hospitals and will be administrated by the Health Policy Commission. We have created a health care system of haves and have-nots in Massachusetts, a system of winners and losers, where the mega health care corporations are the winners and too many patients and too many communities are the losers. The public has a right to know how and where their health care dollars are being invested.